Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're taking a look at Impossible, which was a 1990 release from Gremlin Graphics, developed by Core Design. It's also got music by Barry Leach, who's best known for his work on the Lotus Turbo Challenge and Top Gear games, which are developed in-house by Gremlin. Now, Impossible Mole is part of the Monty Mole series, which is primarily associated with 8-bit platforms. It started back in 1984 with a game developed by Tony Crowther, inspired by the Miners Strike, and Impossible Mole is the sixth game in the series, and the last to be developed uh, back in the day, as it were. There was a seventh instalment in 2013 called Monty Revenge of the Mole, and this sprang from a game design competition in British schools. Proceeds from it went to the charity Special Effect. Uh, but yeah, this was the last of the mainline Monty Mole games, if you like. So, let's go play Impossible. Okay, here we are with Impossible from Gremlin Graphics. It took a few attempts to get booting for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but it seems to be working now. So I've never played this before. It's an early one from Core Design. Uh, who you may recall also brought us Rick Dangerous. So I'm expecting some fairly monstrous difficulty in this. Enjoying that Barry Leach music already. Do we get it during the game though, is the question. Ah, oh, we don't. That's a shame. Okay, so left and right move, up to jump. Up and fire to throw a bomb. Fire by itself, throw a bomb. So oh, apparently I picked up some bombs at some point. Do I have a limit on those? I can have one on screen at once, certainly. But it doesn't seem like there's actual... Oh, yes there is. <laughs> And without the bombs, I can just kick. Which appears to be a largely useless means of attacking. Oh, it's not instant deaths. I approve of this. Oh, it is lots of bad things happening at once, though. <laughs> Points. Very nice. Can we kick him? This kick is useless. Well, that's health. Okay, so a barrel of oil increases your health. Because of course it does. Why can't I kill anything? I could kill, like, the first two enemies in the level, and now everything seems to want to destroy me. I bet that minecart kills me, doesn't it? Yes, of course it does. Of course it does. Whoops. I recognize that music. I could be wrong, but I'm sure that was I'm sure that was a Rob Hubbard composition originally. For I want to say Commando. I think it was used in quite a few games. But evidently, given that it's 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 here. <laughs> but definitely familiar. And definitely not Barry Leach's original work, I feel. Anyway, let's have another go. Oh, okay, so, so we start with some bombs. That's why I could kill stuff so quickly. So the kick is useless. So let's let's not waste our bombs. Let's just avoid these bad boys as best we can. Get some health back and immediately lose it. Very good. Oh, 
Avoid the minecart with judicious use of ropes. Or jumping. Ropes would have been better. Ropes! Ooh, that looks like a gun there. Give me the gun. That's not a gun, that's a that's a laser bazooka. Not a very powerful laser bazooka. Hmm. Which way? We go this way? We can go this way. There's stuff. Oh, I've run out of laser bazooka already. I didn't use it. Do they only last for a particular amount of time or something? Now, now what? We, we climb down there. Okay. I don't. No, we can't get through there. Have we got an open structure 2D platformer on our hands? Because it certainly looks like we have. Stop it. I was always under the impression that the Monty Mole... Well, I mean, the other, maybe the other ones are, because I haven't played the other ones, but... I was always under the impression that the Monty Mole games were um, sort of fairly linear in their structure, but it certainly seems like this is quite exploration-based. Can I blast the minecart? Oh, it's a different kind of gun. Apparently I cannot blast the minecart. Okay, let's go up the top then. We'll stand on... No, that's a baddie. Oh, we can't go back! Okay. So, there's a choice of routes, but you can't go back the way you came. And it does also appear... Oh, I can't jump from there. Okay, I guess we're going this way. So once you pick a route, you have to commit to it, but there is a choice of routes to go through. That's an interesting approach. Stop that. Whoops. Only one life kind of sucks. I gotta confess though, this is actually a bit better than I was expecting. Because I know the Monty Mole games are regarded as classics on the 8-bit. But I'd kind of gone on the assumption that I'd never heard of, the, of this one on the Atari ST because, well, for, for good reason. <laughs> but no, this is actually shaping up to be quite good. The fact you've got a choice of levels as well is nice. So let's explore this one, which is the Orient. Ow. Oh, shit. Look at us. We're full of stereotypes. Paper cranes and Bruce Lee. That's what the Orient is. I like this um, this ability to sort of grapple up platforms. That's quite neat. There's an interesting variety of environmental hazards as well. So, no, stop it! Get off! Get off! Get off! But well, that went well, didn't it? Don't go that way. Let's try that again. Right, 
I'll go this way. That dude there is gonna poke us in the bum, isn't he? So. Oh well. Only got poked once. So that's fine. And th Ouch. And the thick grass seems to slow you down slightly, so you need to watch out for that. That paper crane, not all that dangerous, but the one down the bottom, deadly. So we will leave that be. And, oh God. Oh, it's a ninja. I thought, it was, I thought it was something much more inappropriate for a moment, but thankfully, thankfully it is not. So the special weapons seem to last for a limited amount of time rather than the number of shots. So if you've got them, you might as well use them. It's a racist caricature of a Japanese tourist. Ah, uh, the 90s. What is that? Well, I pressed the space bar and something happened. It didn't seem to consume any of my little S icons, but... Uh, something happened. <laughs> Okay, you can kick the cranes. That's worth remembering. All right, let him do his thing. Avoid the crushy thing. Let Pokey Book poke us in. Poke. Ow. And kill me. Good. That's what I wanted. Can I stand in the cloud? No. It's fine. I didn't want to anyway. Cup of tea looks like something Monty Mole should enjoy. Doesn't restore his health, though. I feel like it should restore his health. Oh. I guess we're going down here. This is actually a pretty decent little platformer. Like I say, I was... I was sort of expecting the worst for various reasons. But, uh... No, I've been quite pleasantly surprised so far. Now, interestingly... If you like what you see here... Um, a little while back, uh, Pico Interactive released an Atari Jaguar port of, of this version, of the Atari ST version. So if you like what you're seeing here, you can actually play it on the Atari Jaguar for a double dose of obscure Atari nonsense. Oh dear. Yeah, for a double dose of obscure Atari nonsense, you can play this version of Impossible on the Atari Jaguar, on an actual physical cartridge with a box and a manual and everything. So a while back those were available in Europe through Funstock, but I think they sold out a while back. Uh, but I believe you can still get them through Pico Interactive directly. So nab one of those if you like the look of this game. All right, let's take a trip to the Amazon. Night time in the Amazon. And there's fruit everywhere because jungle. Can we climb up the pole? No, we can't climb up the pole. 
Spiky Spears. I'm expecting at least some inappropriate representation of natives at some point. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got it. And up. Well, it's mostly wildlife so far, so we, we might be pleasantly surprised. You never know. You got the hummingbird from that Sega Saturn game. Oh, I'm dead. What was the hummingbird shoot em up called? I can never remember. I just remember it often being joked about as the, the best hummingbird based shoot em up you can play. <laughs> anyway, let's give that another go. But these appear to be getting progressively harder, so. Give me banana. Give me hop. Banana, give me hop. Stop that. Stop that. Stop it. You've taken so much of my health already. Float. Thank you. Alright, a floating mechanic. That's good. That's good. That make that makes sense in the context as well. A bit of slowdown going on on this level. There is quite a lot of background detail going on, but it, I don't know. The ST should be able to handle this sort of thing without too much difficulty. At least it, it's not making it unplayable by any means. It's just quite noticeable when it does slow down. Hup. Grapes! There's a bazooka thing. You're gonna kill me. Stop killing me! And or give me some help. Oh, I'm dead. This is really hard. <laughs> this is more in line with what I was expecting. I'm anticipating our performance on the ice level will be even worse than on the Amazon, but let's give it a go just for completionism's sake. It looks like the Bermuda Triangle stage only opens up when you've finished all the other ones. So we'll make this our last attempt for now. But yeah, certainly so far I've been very pleasantly surprised with this. I was not expecting a particularly amazing game at all, but uh, yeah, this is a a pretty decent console style platformer for the Atari ST and it's nice it's nice to see it scrolling as well because so many so many platformers like this on the ST um, were kind of rejigged so that they didn't have to scroll um, so like Switchblade 2 which is also by Core Design is a good example of that that deliberately used sort of flip screen scrolling to cover up the ST's sort of weakness in scrolling and yes, the scrolling in this isn't amazing, but it's it's also quite a bit better than I've seen in a lot of other ST games. So it's uh, it's something at least. Now, oh, oh, that's awkward. Oh no! Oh, slippery, slippery, death. <laughs> You know what, I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad because there's an interesting variety of level gimmicks in this. The level designs are varied. Lots of different things to do and you can try all of those different levels right from the outset. I haven't unlocked anything or got any save games or anything on this. You could just try any of those four levels from the outset. So if you're getting frustrated with one, you can just pick up and try another one. Um, until you can make it through all of them. 
yeah, good job. I'm, I'm more impressed with that than I was expecting to be. Don't know if I'm going to return to it, but certainly, certainly I don't regret having spent my time with that. And like I say, there is that Atari Jaguar version as well, which I do actually own a copy of, so I will spend some time with that at some point. At some point, I want to spend some decent time doing some Atari Jaguar videos on this channel. Um, haven't decided when or how I'm going to do that yet, uh, but it will happen at some point, and as part of that, um, we'll take a look at Impossible and see how it is. But anyway, we'll leave that there for now. This was the Atari SD version. This is excellent Barry Leach music here. But yes, anyway, as much as I'd like to sit and listen to Barry Leach all day, uh, we'll leave that there for now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.